Hey everyone, I finished my fishing trip so I could come back and teach you about another topic area in stepped rods. In this lecture, we're going to talk about inclined planes. Let me explain a little bit more about what that means. Normally, we've just been looking at a plain old stepped rod thus far. There might have been multiple sections, maybe even different materials. But we're pretty much just looking to find the forces inside so we can calculate stress and perhaps material deformation. But in inclined planes, we're now going to be looking at a stepped rod system where there is a weld that connects two pieces of the rod together. This weld can either be like a weld or an adhesive bond caused by glue. So now that we've got a weld, we're essentially introducing more ways that the system can fail. So the system can now, instead of just being pulled apart normally, can now be pulled apart relative to the weld and have normal stress. And it can also experience shear stress along the weld, where the two junctions will slide apart. So shear stress is when the two pieces of the weld slide to each other, and normal stress on the weld is if they pop off. The rod itself can still fail in regular normal and be stretched out in the case where the weld is actually stronger than the material itself. So normally I go through a derivation in class, but I'll save you all the time here, and I'll include those as an additional reference at the end. Effectively, you can go through some derivations of calculating different areas and things like that, but ultimately what comes out of all of this is you get two equations. The way to calculate normal stress on the weld is to take the regular stress that you've calculated, which is just force over area inside of that section, and multiply it by a factor of cosine squared theta. To calculate the shear stress, you'll again just take the normal stress in that stepped rod system, which is again P over A, the normal force inside that rod divided by the area, and you'll multiply that by a factor of sine theta, cosine theta. The main thing you need to really pay attention to is, woo, is that the angle theta is relative to a line that passes vertically through the beam itself or the stepped rod. So to compute sigma theta and tau theta in the future problems that we're going to look at, all you need to do is worry about these equations here and be extra careful that you use the correct theta. One other thing we can look at is when these equations will reach their maximum stress. Well, when would sigma theta be a maximum and when would tau theta be a maximum? For what values of theta? Pause your video and just think about that for a second. Well, pretty much, normal stress is going to be maximum if the weld itself had an angle of zero degrees. Because then, well, you just have a perpendicular weld. So normal stress is going to be the highest because there actually isn't any shear stress at all. The weld is just two sections like this. Shear stress will be maximum when the angle is 45. And the reason this is because when you look at the equation, sine of 45 times cosine 45 will be the maximum that that equation can achieve. Now let's look at this example problem right here. I'll jump to a paper solution so we can analyze this particular stepped rod problem, which it's not really a stepped rod, it's just a single bar, but there is a weld of what we're shown 60 degrees. Let's figure out how the system might fail and apply our new equations that we have for normal stress and shear stress along a weld. All right, let's take a look at this inclined plane problem which is in the stepped rod lecture category. So what we can see is we've got a bar, we've got a force on either side, we've got an angle of 60 degrees relative to the horizontal side of our beam. We're told we have a circular cross section of four inches squared. We're told it's a steel bar with a yield stress of 100 KSI, a Young's modulus of 30 mega PSI, and a maximum change in length allowable of 0.1 inch. The properties of our weld we're told the maximum normal stress there, or sigma theta, is 80 KSI, and the shear strength of our weld is 40 KSI. We're told to find F maximum at either end, such that the overall uh, safety factor is greater than or equal to 2.5. So the four things that we need to check in this problem here are A, that the bar yields, just in normal, like, pooling. We also need to check this change in length constraint, and then we need to check the two constraints relative to the weld, which is that the weld could fail under normal stress and just go and be pulled apart, 
or that the weld could fail under shear stress, which is when the shear kind of splits the weld this way, okay? One thing that we need to just be really sure about before we begin this problem and forget is that this angle of 60 degrees is not actually the angle that we want. Remember from the lecture we just did, the angle should be relative to a vertical line that passes through. So the angle that we really want is this pink one right here, which is 30 degrees. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can jump back in and check conditions A, B, C, and D. So let's do that. Let's check condition A, which is that the bar yields. Well, we know that the safety factor that we have to achieve is 2.5, so we set that equal to sigma y over sigma design, our maximum limit over what we're actually experiencing. So we know that sigma y is given, it's 100 ksi, so it's 100 times 10 to the third psi divided by our sigma design which looking here, we've got only a single F, so that's going to be F over A, which our area we're told is four inches squared. So I'll just put a little note down here that this is F over A, and this is inches squared. So we calculate F max from right here, we would find that F max is equal to 160,000 pounds or 160 kip. Now let's check condition B, which is that delta L max is exceeded. So we know that the safety factor again is equal to 2.5, which is going to be equal to our change in L max over the change in length of our system, change in length actual. Well, to compute this, we just plug in our limit for delta L max, which is 0 0.1 inches. This is what goes on the top. And remember that our equation for delta L is flea, F times L over E times A. So remember this is L naught, or L initial. So what we're gonna get is F times the L initial, which is 27 inches, over Young's modulus, which is E, or 30 times 10 to the sixth PSI times the area, which was four inches squared. So now we've got everything in here except F. So when we compute F max for this condition. We get that F max is equal to 178,000 pounds. So now just looking at these two things right now, we can see that F max between these two conditions is 160,000 pounds. The lower force will always govern the problem. Now what we do is we'll check the weld. So we'll check the weld for normal stress failure. Again, we set the safety factor equal to 2.5, which we'll say is the strength normal of the weld, which is our max limit over sigma theta. And recall from before that our equation for sigma theta is equal to sigma times cosine squared theta, which is effectively going to be equal to, in this case, f over a cosine squared of theta. So we plug in all of our numbers. We get 80 times 10 to the third psi divided by our f over a, which is f over 4 inches squared times the cosine squared of 30 degrees. And remember that this 30 degrees was what I pointed out to you earlier. This was a way that the person who wrote this problem was trying to trick you. But fortunately, we're smarter than they are. So now when we get out all of this, this tells us that F max here is equal to 171,000 pounds. So again, this is less than this, but greater than 160,000 pounds, so this is still governing. The last thing we need to check is condition D, which is that the weld fails in shear. 
Well, again, we use our safety factor equal to 2.5. We set that equal to S shear, which is the strength of our weld in shear. And we'll divide that by tau theta, which from before, remember our equation for tau theta is sigma sine theta cosine theta. So we plug in everything we know. This is 40 times 10 to the third PSI divided by F over four inches squared times sine theta, or sine of 30, cosine of 30. And what we find here is that F max is equal to 148,000 pounds. As a result, this force right here is the smallest of all the forces we've calculated. So the force that allows every criteria to be satisfied is this force right here. This is our final answer, and that is how we apply the equations for normal stress of the weld and shear stress along the weld to solve a inclined step rod problem. And that's it. You'll see at the end of this lecture, I've included some additional resources. This includes an extra additional example problem where you can see you've got the solution numerically for it, so you can check your work and see if you can apply the equations correctly. And there are also some different derivations of how we compute the shear stress and normal stress along a weld. You can feel free to take a look at this or not really worry yourself and just be happy with the equations that you've got. Well, that's it for this very quick addendum to stepped rods. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to apply normal stress and shear stress equations for a weld, and I'll see you all in class. Thanks for watching.